This video is brought to you by the Town of Grexdale Kickstarter. All right, timer starting now. I've been 3D printing for my tabletop games for over four and a half years now, and I've learned so much since I started, so I figured why not share some of those tips I've learned the hard way with you in order to save you time, money, and heartache. Now this list of tips is for FDM printers, resin printers, tabletop enthusiasts, and non-enthusiasts. But I'm gonna admit I naturally lean a bit to the tabletop 3D printing side since that's what I mostly print for. So stick around, join me as I share 15 tips in 15 minutes. Coming up next. Hi there, my name is Danny, the 3D Printing DM, and welcome to 3D Printed Tabletop, a channel where we cover all things 3D printing for your tabletop games. Let me first start by saying thank you to all of my patrons over on Patreon. It's because of their support that I'm able to make videos like this one. And if you enjoy these videos, please consider becoming a patron as well. Let's start with technical tips. Leveling or tramming the bed is the most important skill you can learn. And yes, this includes both FDM and resin printers. If I could divide my failed prints into categories, bed leveling would probably be the highest category. And that is because bed leveling leads to so many other problems. Most common for me being clogged nozzles, bad adhesion, warping. And in the resin world, it means full bed prints, models warp on one side, prints fail completely or don't stick to the bed at all. Quick tip for resin printers, all four corners should have the same level of pressure when you're trying to pull on that piece of paper. If a side is looser or tighter than the others, retighten it and try again until you get it equal on all four corners. For the FDM printers, when leveling, it's always easier for me to start with the nozzle too high and lowering it down to going from the bottom, being too tight, to bringing it up. I've messed up beds before like this, but start from the top and raise the bed slowly to get it just right rather than starting closer. Little two tips in there for you. Don't be afraid to try different filaments or resins, but when you find something that works, stick with it. Pun intended. Filaments come in all colors, finishes, and prices, and I recommend finding one that you love, that looks good, prints reliably, and is priced at your price point, because some folks want as cheap as possible while others will pay more for higher-end filaments. YouTubers like me try a whole bunch of different filaments and resins because we want variety instead of the normal sea of gray. But you don't have to, especially if you're printing for tabletop games. I like printing in gray because it allows me to easily see any issues in the print quality before doing any painting or post-processing. And this is true of both resin and FDM prints. Quick tip for the big model painters out there, if you want as minimal work as possible, print in black and then spray the highlights over it and that's it. This is gonna eliminate 99% of your work when painting big terrain pieces and add natural shadows. For minis, I recommend printing in some kind of gray because if you miss an area, it's not gonna stick out like a green or a blue resin color would. And for those curious, my favorite PLA is eSun PLA Plus Gray. Which leads me to my next tip. Adhesion has been one of my worst enemies and I found the secret to rock art adhesion for me is hairspray. My hairspray of choice is Suave Max Hold. It's a bit pricey, but a bottle will last me for freaking ever and it works for me. But I don't think brand matters as much as using some kind of adhesive if necessary. I started using this because I felt like, man, the level's perfect, it holds, it passes the finger test and my bed level test, why aren't my prints sticking? So my original solution was to lower the bed level a bit so that it would put additional pressure to stick. And remember what I just said a minute ago? This is bringing the nozzle too close to the bed. It's gonna cause problems. That's the wrong solution. Please don't do that. So then I tried cleaning the bed with IPA, no more sticky finger grease. That still didn't work. So hairspray. Just get the bed level right and then use the form of adhesion of your choice. I like hairspray like I mentioned, but a lot of folks like glue stick too. For resin folks, temperature makes a big difference, but calibrating your initial layers also is gonna make the difference. And if that still doesn't work, try different resin. Might be all that you need to do. As a last resort, you can try sanding the bed down a little bit. I wouldn't suggest too much, but it can help with grip. Speaking of avoiding print issues, just before you go on a 3D printing break, example, you're gonna stop printing for a week or a month in my case, maybe it's a vacation or you just need a hobby break, anything like that. Make sure the printer is working before you take that printing break because what's gonna happen is you're gonna come back ready to print, excited, and you're gonna find a clog, a jam, a wobbly bed, retraction issues, and you're gonna have to start fixing your printer right when you get back. It's gonna kill your fun, believe me. So take the 30 minutes or an hour, fix that clog, relevel your bed, change the nozzle, swap the extruder, whatever you've gotta do, get the printer functional, and I promise you're gonna thank me when you come back home excited. I found this to be especially true with my resin printers where I need to make sure I mix resins very well when coming back to them after these breaks. 
the failures are gonna happen a lot more than you might think. And this is in the technical section because it means you're probably gonna be fixing something at some point. And if that happens to you, just know it's part of the process and happens to people more than you might initially assume. Lots of people have perfect experiences with their printers off the bat. I still wouldn't count on it, especially if that perfect experience comes from a YouTube review, including mine. Okay, everyone's level of technical expertise is different. Every printer is a different tinkering experience as well, even when you follow instructions to the T. The good news, if I, a techie normie, can get my printers to work most of the time, I'm confident you can too. Quick tip, Facebook searches aren't the best for troubleshooting in my experience. I think they're very bad. So I Google whatever my problem is, of course, and I add Reddit and I can see the names of Reddit threads that usually have my exact problem. I see the responses, and that usually gets me better results for the problem. Of course, regular old Google can get you those fixes too, but I also recommend 3D printing Discord as well. I'll link it down below. Next up are practical tips, but first I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, the Town of Grexdale Kickstarter. The Town of Grexdale Kickstarter is a follow-up to the City of Spiritdale Kickstarter, and it brings 100% support-free, multi-level medieval buildings to your tabletop. And these buildings together create a full medieval town complete with sculpted interiors and exteriors, making this set of terrain stand out from other fantasy building collections. The core set includes six building STLs and the campaign includes up to 18 main town buildings and 22 supplementary stretch goals, like the blacksmith house in the medieval church. Best part, none of the town of Grexdale files require supports and all come with alignment pegs and holes for easy assembly. Each building also comes pre-split for printing on standard FDM printers like the Ender 3 and Prusa printers. The Kickstarter is live right now and there's a link in the description below, so please check it out and I hope you enjoy Grexdale as much as I did. Thanks again for supporting YouTube content creators by sponsoring today's video, Town of Grexdale. Now let's get back to our 15 tips. Make a little repair kit. This is my FDM repair kit. It has everything I most commonly use in one cute package, an old filament box. And this is so convenient, having a single dedicated place for these things with almost everything I need that I can just throw in there when I'm done, reliably know where it is, is huge. It's saved me a lot of time and headaches since I made this kit, and I'd totally recommend it to everyone. Here's what's inside. A microfiber cloth, every size Allen wrench imaginable, clippers, a few sizes of screwdrivers, and a box of the most common screws I found on 3D printers. Because I've worked with a lot of Ender 3 clones over the years, I also have an Ender 3 repair kit as well. Like I mentioned earlier, in order for this to work though, I need to know exactly where this kit is at all times. Related to this, buy any kind of silicone mats for your resin printers, seriously. Resin is like sand and dust, it gets freaking everywhere, and these mats make cleanup a million times easier. It doesn't have to be the ones I linked below, just buy silicone mats, put them in front and or underneath your resin printers. You can wipe everything down super quickly. I use a spray bottle with IPA in it and paper towels or microfiber cloths. It was remarkable to me how well these worked and I wish I'd gotten them sooner. The most important consumable when resin printing, always have paper towels and make sure to keep a little trash bin or plastic bag very close by. The nearby waste collection bin or container is the real tip here and having it nearby is gonna mean less waste and help you have a cleaner workspace, which is still something I'm working on as you can tell behind me, but having a trash can or two in my case where the waste happens makes a huge difference. Learn to use gloves effectively. Now gloves for working with resin, you wanna make sure they are working as intended, i.e. without any holes in them. In my experience, it's surprisingly easy to rip these, even if they're the more durable ones. Some people reuse their gloves and that means running the risk of holes from repeated use and why use gloves if you're gonna have skin contact with the resin, right? You also gotta make sure you remove them correctly without getting resin on the inside where your hands go when you put them back on. You know, I've reused mine before, but I've also accidentally ripped my gloves when removing hard to remove supports. These gloves aren't meant to be reused, so just be aware of that. Find creative ways to reuse failed prints and old spool holders. This is just good for sustainability and recycling, and I don't think it's intuitive when you're first starting out, which is why it's on the list. Lots of people repurpose their old spools to make organizers or terrain pieces in some cases. Some folks will also reuse the spools themselves if the filament comes ready for that. I've never done that personally, but it's definitely a thing. And keep in mind, a ton of old spool organizers are completely free, so you don't have to spend any money for this repurposing. Something I learned from Uncle Jesse here on YouTube, you can reuse old supports for cleaning the bed to lift it out and give you some help. 
When doing this myself, I found using well-bundled resin supports, not the super thin ones, works best. And they need to be long enough to get out of the bigger resin pools, so just keep that in mind when you're shading them. Super easy, quick statues by dry brushing them with a cheap granite paint or even a few shades of gray and white highlights and voila, you have a statue. This works really well with supportless minis in my experience and can also look like they've been petrified and it's super easy, no painting skill required. And if you want them to be like a gold or a silver, you can use some of these spray paints that I've used in previous videos as well for an instant finish. Have a plan for where you're gonna put the prints. Okay, your print collection is gonna grow quickly and faster than you can imagine, especially if you love printing and your printers are running nonstop. And this is the case whether your prints are functional decorative, bust statues, for example, or collections like minis and terrain like I have. So consider the different size models for your collection or your storage space, which is why my shelving is adjustable. For example, my cosplay super large pieces go at the top of my shelf. Now my bigger buildings have their own size storage space if I don't wanna put them in bin storage, but I try not to do that because then I forget I have them at all. That's just me and I'm an ADHD drain collector, so that's why. The other thing to consider is dust. Keeping them in some kind of container shelved unit will definitely help reduce that when you go to use or show them off to folks who walk in your showcase area. And they can be amazed by your printing skills rather than the stickiness or dustiness of your prop. It's okay to stop 3D printing. And this tip is meant in two ways. Number one, your printer does not have to be running nonstop. It isn't for a skump. Number two, if you need a break 3D printing for a month or two, or if it just isn't fun for you, you don't have to keep doing it. Now, over my four years of printing, Sometimes months would go by without me 3D printing anything, and I felt guilty about this at first, especially since I have a 3D printing channel. And I realized the truth is, yeah, you can take a break from your hobby. It's okay if I'm getting frustrated by a problem I can't solve at that moment. Sometimes the break provides clarity and I come back and fix it in 30 minutes, and I'm back excited again. And some folks thrive with that challenge, others like me get demotivated by it. So take a break, come back to the hobby rejuvenated. One quick addendum, if 3D printing hobby isn't making you happy, it's okay to move on and try another hobby instead. Fun before quality. Now, when I first started this YouTube channel, my standards for minis was different than it is now. And it took me a while to learn that for me, the fun and magic of 3D printing was more important to me than print quality. And to accept that people who'd comment on my quality probably came from a good place, but I wasn't interested in spending hours, days, weeks calibrating a profile to perfection. I just wanted to print and was okay with stringing and a few retraction marks. And I just wanted to keep printing, painting, making things for game night. That's what I wanted to do and that's what made me happy. And that was okay because I felt like there were other channels much better at explaining calibration than I was. If you're worried about sharing your hobby with others or if you're worried because you're struggling with perfect quality, don't lose the fun of the hobby because you're afraid of those things. Keep going and you're gonna get better along the way, I promise. Print what you need and or what is fun. This might seem obvious, but printing can get very overwhelming. You don't realize this when you're starting because you're so focused on that excitement of the possibilities. But you can quickly get hundreds of gigs of files fast, especially if you're printing minis and terrain. Next thing you know, you have a collection that you just don't know where to start enjoying it. Focusing on stuff that you need for your board game or as an accessory or as a gift instead of maybe always having the printer running will help you focus on the fun, cut out that noise and enjoy the hobby. Find a local community or your people. I recently visited a makerspace in my area, MakerFX here in Orlando. They gave me a tour and I joined their Slack. And in addition to just soaking in all the projects and variety of tools, you know, lurking in the Slack feed, there was so many projects. I left super inspired. If you're like me and you need hands-on learning, maybe I don't have a local friend who knows all the above. Finding a place or community like this in your area is something I'd recommend at this point, and I wish I'd done it sooner, and I wish I'd started more ambitious projects than the ones I already have. If any of you MakerFX members are watching, thanks for being awesome and welcoming me to your community and space. So there you have it, 15 tips in 15 minutes. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting us on Patreon, liking this video, and subscribing for more videos like this one. It really helps the channel. I'll see you next time. Thanks again for watching, happy printing, and happy gaming.